Welcome back to my channel everybody. Uh, my name is Vainan Play Games and uh, today we are back at Minecraft. Uh, thanks, thank you guys for all the support so far. I know it's not much but anything is better than nothing. So we are still playing on one world. If you even look at the top uh, left hand corner it says Worlds 1. That's where I got the inspiration for the name of this world which means one world, only one world. Let's jump into the world and uh, have a look at where we left off or where we left it the last time we played okay right well we are inside uh, the storage room i think it's, it's pretty nice but i wanted to show you guys something uh, when we finished up this uh, storage room i did a bit of playing i had to because i couldn't bother you guys with all the time it took me in order to finish up uh, this thing over here let me show you. So what we've got here is one massive, 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 massive potato farm. And you might think, who needs so many potatoes? Well, definitely me and uh, also some wheat. So the wheat, this wheat will be used uh, for the cow farm that's still coming so that we never run out of food. And the potato farm, this is where the farm starts. So in today's episode, uh, I had to do this. Once this was done, I did some terraforming as well. Placed some uh, some uh, dirt blocks. You can still see the grass needs to grow. So this potatoes will basically be used in the XP farm. So the way I like to play Minecraft is you cannot call a world a world unless it has an XP farm. So let me show you what I've done with the materials. Oh, I see this guy took over my storage room. Hey, hey you, yes you, you look at me, what are you doing in my, in my storage room? And you are pushing me around, you can look down on all my equipment, you better look down. <laughs> anyway, let's quickly head down, I want to show you guys something, in my item box, uh, we've got, mm, not even everything, but we've got the smoker, one hopper, one chest, a stack of cobblestone which is too much in any way just so that you know and we only have one stack of potatoes so in this xp farm we actually need five stacks of potatoes reason being the hopper the hopper has a holding space for anything that gets trapped inside the hopper it's five blocks wide which means you want to fill it up with five stacks of potatoes all the way but I know you know this XP farm. There's a lot of tutorial videos on YouTube covering this XP farm. We will just have to wait and see today whether it still works in the latest update. I'm not sure. You'll be seeing it as I'm doing it and we'll all have to see together. But there is a trick to this farm as I discovered by myself. I don't know who else knows about this trick when using this farm because I saw in the tutorials people upload, they throw the potatoes inside the smoker and they leave them there. They leave the potatoes to stack up, let's say, about 10 potatoes. Then they'll remove it. But I found that's the easiest way that you're not going to get the levels that you can actually get from this farm. So I'm, I'm not going to give away any secrets yet. I want to show you how many experience you can actually get from this farm with the way I'm using it, not the way all the other YouTubers uses it. Later on in this series, we are going to have like a mob XP farm. It's a must as soon as we can get like a dungeon, where like maybe a zombie spawner or a skeleton spawner. We will get to that shortly. Okay, so let's quickly continue. Before we can start with the XP farm, we need to remove potatoes but i still see a few of them that's not completely grown so i'm only going to try and remove the ones that has grown up already because we don't want to lose out on having two or three potatoes and if you remove it in a half stage or three quarter stage you're just going to get one potato so on the first one we managed to get three there we've got another two and so on let's let me quickly remove as many as i can as many as the, like the ones that's already grown up, we're going to remove them only. It might be quite a lot. 
and I'm actually hoping we manage to get five, uh, four stacks, but we need a fifth stack. So the so stack number five will basically be used to get our levels up. I can already see that I'm already at uh, 29 levels, which means it's already a good amount, but it's not good enough. Uh, the the XP farm on the levels we'll have to concentrate on it a bit later on as well. I just want to get the, the XP farm done and then we can start playing some more, uh, gather some more leather in order to make more books because we still haven't uh, put the bookshelves inside the enchanting room. And I think my volume on game is too loud. Let me quickly correct that because I think it's interfering with the way my voice comes out. Anyway, I think that's a lot better. Anyway, let's continue removing some potatoes. I guess by this point in this whole entire world, I'm the biggest potato farmer. Uh, let's see how many we managed to get. We are already at three stacks and I've only done two rows, which means having such a big potato farm is definitely, definitely worth it. Just remember to skip the ones that hasn't grown up already so, so that you don't waste your own time. Uh, removing potatoes. You know what? Maybe I must fast forward a bit. Oh, but we're almost done. I'll just leave it. We'll do do another forward piece as soon as we have to do something that's not that interesting. Maybe we put some cool music so that you guys have something to listen to while you watch me do all the hard work. Because believe me, Minecraft takes a lot of work, especially building a cool world. Not just any world, the best world. And I think in this uh, series, I'm planning on making the best world possible. Make it as easy as possible for us to, to play it and make it fun. I know in the beginning, like now, we are not doing many things that's fun. But I think it's part of, part of the experience. The start, building your first home, which we still need to do, by the way. Going into the nether, dying a few times, which is also going to be happening on this series. Uh, but we'll still get to that. And it's getting dark. It takes me almost a whole day to remove a few rows of potatoes. Yeah, but one thing to remember also. It doesn't mean that we're going to end up having all these stacks. We must still replant them. So that's why I'm hoping for more than five stacks and then end up planting the remaining ones and we are still safe. We'll still manage to have enough. Quickly sleep. Let's sleep. Maybe I can put it a little bit louder because I can't hear anything as well. Uh, let's head up. Get outside. And continue harvesting the crops. Oh, I took one out that hasn't grown up. Like these ones are not grown. Believe me, it takes a lot of time waiting for your crops to grow in Minecraft. So you always need to have something else to keep you busy with while your crops are growing. And you also need to re uh, be reminded that once you plant crops, don't go wandering off hundreds of blocks away. Because if you are too far away from your crops, they will not grow. You're going to return and find that nothing has happened on your farm. And you'll ask yourself what happened and what's going on and Minecraft is at fault. But no, there's a thing called the render distance, which shows how far you can look. And there's another thing called, uh, uh, what's the name of that thing? But simulation distance. The simulation distance is basically how far away you are from, from a specific block in order for it to simulate, to grow or to move or anything like that. So... Keep in mind that if you do make big, big, big farms like mine over here, don't wander too far from your farm because it will never grow and you'll end up having a, a fruitless farm. Okay, I see some of the other ones that we left grew up. Look at this piggy. You want a potato? Piggy, piggy, piggy. Uh, let's, let's do something for piggy. Uh, look at that piggy. Take a potato piggy. Piggy, Piggy, okay, Piggy doesn't want to pick up a potato, let's give him a, oh, I think I need to feed him, he's like a little baby piglet, let's feed him one and see if he's happy, 
Are you happy now, Piggy? No, you can't have more. That's that's the only ones you'll get from me today. Anyway, we've got work to do, Piggy. Let's continue removing our potatoes, potatoes, or in my language, uh, artopples. We are removing artopples, not just potatoes, but artopples. That language is called Afrikaans because I'm from South Africa. It's the only place you'll hear a mixture of languages and that will be on my YouTube channel and inside my world. If you guys want me to add some more uh, of my language words and give you a bit of explanations while we play Minecraft, just put it down in the comments and uh, I can give you many. Any word you want, I can give it to you. But strictly no swearing because believe me in my language, swearing comes naturally so even some of the younger kids around town especially high school everybody already swears i know it's not nice but it's just a natural thing especially being afrikaans sometimes you can't explain something as good as you want you would you would use a swear word and in afrikaans we've got many swear words to explain many things oh damn it doesn't look like i'm going to have enough uh, stacks left after replanting we'll just have to wait and see hopefully we've got enough but if if it's not enough what we can do is maybe take the ones we've got already and go and uh, take some sugar canes because remember we still need paper and also get ourselves some leather again and that's it's very very tough these cows are, are stupid. They don't want to spawn everywhere or every time. You'll end up getting three cows and then it will take you another 10 or 20 minutes before you see another cow. It's, it's the scarcest I've seen cows in my entire life. Oh, jeez, we've got many stacks. Many, plenty, plenty to go from, to work with. Anyway, yeah, sometimes you will hear that my uh, English language sounds a bit strange or something doesn't matter i'm very very well uh, taught in english as well as afrikaans only thing is if you don't speak english uh, on a daily basis you tend to to forget a lot of words pronounce a lot of words incorrectly but it doesn't matter as long as the idea is there as long as you guys can understand me and understand what i'm trying to describe to you uh, I'm happy and I think you will be happy too. Anyway, let's quickly head back, see how many stacks we have. And it almost looks like we've got enough, which means today you'll see what an XP farm is supposed to look like. And hopefully later, why is this game so laggy? Anyway, uh, I'll have to fix that. Oh, but we'll do that another time. Maybe I'll show you how to fix it. Let me go back here and see. Okay, so we've got one stack. Now we've got two stacks. We've got more than enough. Three there. Uh, the fourth stack. Four there. And then stack number five, which means those remaining stack and almost a stack will be used for us to, to get the experience levels worth. You're not going to be using a lot of potatoes to get experience, perhaps uh, even uh, half a stack. You'll be on level 30, if I can remember correctly. And the way I see it, getting half a stack of potatoes in the new potato farm will be nothing. So I'll be having levels until the end of days. So let's quickly transfer all of these things back and head outside. Let me just empty my hot bar over here. Then we'll place the materials needed to build the farm. Okay, I think that's all we need. Let's let's find a, a location to build this XP farm. Remember, you also want your XP farm not too far away from where you're going to be building your first home. And uh, while playing on this world, uh, I, I checked this little house. I thought I might just destroy it. I wanted to destroy it, but then again... We must remember, this was the first home of the world. And we don't want to take away from the nostalgia of the first world. So we'll just keep this house. And we'll maybe empty a piece of land over here in this section. 
maybe I have the house pointing towards or the entrance being somewhere on this side. So which means if we're going to have an XP farm, we can even build it next to the storage room somewhere, maybe in this location. Okay, let's see. So how it actually works, you're going to be placing one chest. Inside that chest, when you've got your cobblestone blocks, pick them up and uh, spam place one block in, in every single uh, holding cell inside this chest. You can put four or five blocks inside, it doesn't matter, like this one, I can leave 38 there, but it's it's the same thing, so I don't want 38 there, so we can just, uh, we can just remove that one and take the block again. You only need one, like that. We only need one in each uh, in each spot, then the next step would be take your hopper and you will want to place your hopper on top of this chest so so to accomplish that just dug down with maybe circle if you are using controller or shift i i believe on the pc and just click place so once you 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 go down or you crouch you'll be able to place it on top of the chest which means anything that wants to move through will will want to end up in the chest but it won't be able to because we already filled the chest to the brim and this using solid blocks like cobblestone will not allow for them to despawn or or how can i say stack up which means they it's the best way to use solid blocks another thing that i quickly forgot on this build is to get some temporary building blocks because now we need to go a bit higher up we can even use gravel, it's an easy block to build with and to destroy as well. So just place some gravel blocks next to your build here. And then you want to take your smoker. Okay, I think I placed it in the wrong spot. Let me remove these two and put it in front. Because I want the smoker to, to point directly at me. So with the smoker, same thing. Don't just uh, click on the smoker, you'll open those slots that I told you about which are these one two three four five that we want to fill up with five stacks of potatoes remember don't just put one potato in each uh each holding cell it's not gonna work you have to have to fill it up completely that's why we've got five stacks of potatoes anyway once again crouch down and then just aim at the hopper and place your smoker which means it's now facing towards us then <laughs> check all the villagers are watching me hi guys i know i know i'm building the awesome coolest and he just walked away while i was busy explaining to him but you are still watching me i'm building the coolest xp farm anyway let's let's get back down so yes there you go that's your xp farm and you might wonder but Vainant, is that all you know what the truth to the to the question is yes that is all we just finished building the best xp farm in minecraft i don't know many people will <laughs> will probably say no but it's not there's a better way well good for them if there is a better way i would like to learn that way i'm not being judgmental i would like to know the best ways in minecraft because I'm a regular player this is my game i enjoy it the most of all other survival games and personally i never liked it i actually told my children because they they were the ones that uh, introduced me to minecraft my son to be more precise i always told them i hate minecraft because i don't even want to see or watch a video and then one day my son managed uh, to persuade me so i ended up playing minecraft and then from there I couldn't get rid of Minecraft. It was a daily thing. Right, so after you placed your XP farm, which hopefully still works in this new update of Minecraft, which is the 1.17.40 update. And if you are wondering, this is the Bedrock Pocket Edition. I say Bedrock, but it's basically the Pocket Edition of Minecraft because I'm playing on my cell phone. But I think the Pocket and the Bedrock are basically one and the same you'll find if you put in a seed on bedrock and you put in a seed on pocket i do have bedrock but 
uh, I've never really tried to do seed comparisons between the two. So uh, maybe you guys can, can go and taste that out. Maybe let me know as well. Anyway, so here's what's happening. Let me explain to you. Now the potatoes are busy cooking. And before they fall into the, the baked uh, block over here, the holding cell for the baked potatoes, you see they disappear. So what, what's happening is they are ending up inside the hopper. Here they are. We've got nine baked already. Now, something for you guys to remember. Do not, and I repeat, do not remove the baked potatoes from your hopper. Please, you are going to send me a comment later on telling me, but why not? This XP farm is not working at all. It's, it's a bunch of rubbish. You are just telling us lies. Seems like I'm trying to do something that's not true, but... Here's the thing, you know, the levels, as soon as you smell something in Minecraft, whether it's in a furnace or in a smoker, like we are doing now, the reason why I'm using uh, the, the smoker and not any other uh, equipment to do this with is because the smoker is effective. It's very fast when it comes to smelting. Uh, it's much more, more efficient when it comes to the end result. That's why I'm going with the smoker. So what you want to do is you want to leave the hopper to entirely fill up all the way. You want one stack there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. After you have filled the spots inside the hopper, that's when the leveling up part actually starts. Then I'm going to show you step by step what you do and how you proceed to get the levels out with with the most efficient way not the way they show you on on other tutorials but using my way because i found this is definitely the best way uh, you can test it out yourself after you've made your your own xp farm uh, then then you can let me know whether you succeeded or not anyway while we wait for the first batch of potatoes to smelt oh and what i also wanted to tell you regarding the xp farm the levels that I was talking about, and I totally forgot to mention it any further. Those levels end up inside the hopper. So if you are going to remove your potatoes from the hopper, it means you are also taking the levels, which you are basically duplicating with the way I'm going to show you how to do it. And you don't want to, to remove your levels because if they remain inside the hopper, you'll always be getting levels from that smoker. Once you remove them, you have removed your chances of getting any additional levels from your, your smoker and you'll only be awarded per item that you're going to smelt, which is what we actually get while you are smelting, let's say, copper. I've never tried using, using a furnace, the blast furnace, smelting copper pieces or something because personally it's a lot harder to get copper and uh, iron and that stuff than it is just to get a few potatoes. Okay, let's let's quickly head to our crafting table. I want to have a look at how many uh, papers we can get from this stack. Uh, let's go into building. 69, yes, yeah, 69 pieces of paper. That's not bad at all. Uh, you know what, let's quickly see what's the, oh, so it takes three pieces of paper and one leather to make one book. And I believe you need wood and one book to create one bookshelf. Uh, so for now, I think I have a place for my paper. I just want to see whether it was here. No, I think I put it inside this one. Yes, there's some more nine pieces or actually nine pieces more. And then the sugar cane will go into this chest over here. Right, so now that we've got a little bit of paper, we are waiting for the sugarcane to grow up again uh, and i think we must use this time well let me just check maybe we can add yes yes let's fill up the smoker before we leave okay so now on leaving let's go and see if we can't find a few uh, cattle cows uh, slaughter them get some leather i know it sounds very cruel but Believe me guys, this is what makes Minecraft Minecraft. Minecraft is one of those cool little games where you can go around and slaughter anything. You can kill mobs, kill animals, 
uh, as bad as it sounds killing animals and stuff i'm not trying to sell the fact that you must go out in real life go and kill everything you see no that would be extremely wrong so uh, yes don't don't do that uh, i'm an animal lover myself i'm especially in love with dogs my fa favorite dog of all of them being a pit bull a uh, sad story on that one as well i had a male pit bull he grew up to be about one one and a half years old if i remember correctly and then one day he fell sick he got like a, a type of flu that dogs usually get and uh, having the flu we were unable to help him and he passed away uh, i miss him so much i miss him daily and then after that i also had another pit bull uh, the first one's name was titan and then the second one's name was zeus uh, I wanted to keep it uh, in the Morse cards. I don't know if you guys know what that is. But those are basically your your the gods of the older people. They used to believe in them. Like Zeus and Thor and Loki. Like uh, on, on Avengers basically. Those guys. And on Thor and yes. So yes I went to those names. So this, the second pit bull I got. Uh, the Zeus one. Uh, what actually happened is he did not pass away by himself. Uh, pit bulls being as aggressive as they are, I did everything in my power to raise him to be a loving dog, to love children, to love uh, people he doesn't know, but not to love every everybody. So what happened was I had to move away due to work uh, and my circumstances. I ended up moving very far away, so I had to leave my, my Zuzi behind at my mother's house. And uh, my, my sister and them were there, so the dog got a lot of aggression because I was not around anymore. And I think he missed me a lot. So one day he managed to escape from, from the place we kept him in. Uh, and he bit one of the other dogs and he completely, completely destroyed that dog. Being a pit bull, I think it's it's obvious. So the problem with a pit bull is once it goes around killing things, you, you can be sure that it's going to continue doing it and you won't be able to get, get it out of his system. So I was raised and taught as soon as a dog bites a child, or, or bites in fact uh, other dogs or, or maybe growls at children you don't want to keep that dog it might be funny at first uh, but but hear my advice today you don't want to keep a dog around that's going around growling at anything maybe just maybe one day a small child may be left alone or quickly escapes your view and heads into a certain area and the dog sees him and he attacks you will be too late to stop him so yes what happened with Zeus was we had to take him to the vet and uh, unfortunately they had to put him to rest and that's how he passed away it's both of those stories are quite sad to me I really miss my my pets they were the best thing ever in this world so yes uh, I'm really a, a pet lover I love all animals I even love the ones that nobody else likes. Snakes, anything, spiders, bugs. I like all of them. Anyway, let's let's quickly have a look at our XP farm here. Seems like, uh, let's check the hopper. I'm always afraid to open the hopper. I'm, I'm so scared that we might end up taking a stack out. And it will mean we lose. Okay, so the stacks are stacking up nicely. I think we can go and have a good night's rest quickly before we do uh, yeah, some leather leather farming. The way I'm actually farming leather is not efficient at all. I know, I know, uh, <clears throat> I do know I've got two holding pens, one right in front of the, the storage room and another one not far from it. Normally what you do is take a piece of weed lead two cows inside uh, the stall uh, it's in Afrikaans the stall uh, or the holding pen in English you would lead them inside feed them have them make smaller cows baby cows and then from there you'll end up killing all of them just to get some leather 
And here's that awesomely sweet baby cat again. I really like him. Or maybe it's a new one. Have you guys noticed something else in my in this town? So in the last two episodes, I showed you that most of the villagers passed away or was either killed by zombies or something bad happened to them. So what I did was uh, I had the villagers multiply themselves. I actually came to this spot. You can see there's a different crop growing in this area. I took a lot of carrots. So if you want to have your villagers make more villagers, just take carrots or potatoes. You can take whatever they want. The, uh, normally beetroot, I don't know if they like it. Some villagers don't even pick it up. Uh, meat, they don't pick up meat, but vegetables. So, and wheat also, I don't think all of them like wheat. Maybe only the farmers that's farming the wheat, they'll pick it up. So take carrots. I think most villagers likes carrots. Maybe take a stack. And you would give this guy, let's say, half the stack 32 and you will give his friend 32. And from there, you just forget about them. After a while, if you come back, you'll find many, many village children all around your world. So it's always a good idea to keep your eye on your villagers, especially if you don't want them to, to die <clears throat> and uh, end up having an empty village. And that's not nice because remember later on in this series we want to have a lot of villagers available especially this guy at the at the map room you know what maybe we can lock him inside I know it sounds cruel but it's really really not you see I, I'm I still have the no I don't have the cobblestone anyway let me go and collect some cobblestone I want to lock some of them up because later on we are going to use them especially why I'm saying especially the the map guy over there, we'll call him Mr. Map, we'll even give him a name, if we find, there's another baby, you see what I mean, here we've got another, another piglet, another, uh, what do you, what do they call this small things, a child, a baby, I don't know, but he looks cute, look at him, with the all big head and a big nose, I think his head is bigger than his body, just imagine that was true in real life, that would be extremely funny, Anyway, uh, this guy is very important. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to crouch. There's another one. Perfect. And place a block. So it means they can't escape and zombies cannot get to them. We can still have a look at them here. Uh, now, now I think they are as safe as they can be inside this village. He's trying to get out, but he can't. That's his problem. Anyway, so the reason why you would want your map maker, the, the guy... I think his name is a cartographer, a cartographer, yes, he's the guy that makes maps. Uh, why you want him? He's the one that's going to be taking us towards the, the Woodlands Mansion. For those of you uh, that like to play and go and explore the Woodland Mansions, bear in mind if you do have a, a cartographer in your world or your village, Keep him safe, lock him up, mobs won't be able to get to him and uh, you can always come back, maybe open, put like maybe uh, the way we'll do it is come in, open up a space over there at the top and uh, put some ladders on the side so, and on the inside. Remember villagers cannot climb, so we can climb up and in but they cannot climb up and out and remember to place lights, a light source or else mobs will spawn and they will kill your your friends whatever their names might be anyway it seems like this is a, this is going to take a long time still so i'm actually thinking on what else we can quickly tackle we were still busy getting leather and as you can see i i did not even manage to get a single piece uh here we go at least one piece there i think when it comes to the leather it might be much better or much more convenient to uh, go into the nether, get yourself some ender pearls and use those pearls to, uh, pearls, pearls, how do you pronounce that? But you'll use them uh, to, to find ender, to make ender eyes and then those, or oh, I think you use the pearl to find the stronghold and then once you get the stronghold you've got a library. Another way of getting a lot of books easily is to go and explore, go and explore, see if you can't uh, manage to find another village, 
nearby. Some villages tend to have like a small library inside, especially the desert temples, or the desert villages, not the temples, excuse that, because if you go into a temple expecting to find uh, books, uh, you'll find enchanted books, but you're not going to be finding any bookshelves in order to, to demolish and get yourself a few uh, uh, books so that we can come back, enchant them ourselves or create our own bookshelves for our enchantment table. Okay, so anyway, let's just roam around. I want to show you while we are here, I almost destroyed one piece of this uh, birch forest, as you can see. I had to stack up on some wood while I was busy doing the, the potato farm, the artapel plus. Uh, then uh, let's let's run around. Maybe we are lucky and there's another sheep. The sheep definitely take them, all of them, because we need the wool. Uh, if we don't do it now, eventually we are going to end up wanting to go into the nether and then go and mine uh, netherite or nether debris. So you need wool, believe me, that, that's the best way. And we can even take all the, all the sugarcane we find while running around. Uh, I can also give you a good tip. When you plan on going far away from your base, especially playing Bedrock version uh, on, the, on the Java edition, I think you can press F1 and it gives you coordinates and stuff. But on this version, the Bedrock version, uh, you can actually toggle. You can toggle your coordinates on inside the game options menu. Uh, I can even show you quickly. You go into the settings and then you head down. Okay, you're on game. You remain at game. Then you just head down. Head down. You'll find this little uh, graph there. So you can toggle it. That's off and that's on. So if you've got it in this position, you will notice that on the left hand side in the top corner you'll see position so if you plan on leaving your base write the coordinates down or take a take your cell phone take a picture uh, maybe even do a screenshot or something uh, so that you know if you want to come back in my case i haven't memorized it yet but the way i do it let me show you i'm just going to say like 170 260 that's that's the way i do it uh, it's just a minus 260 and a 170 so that we know by the time if we want to return back to the base i must just look for 160 positive minus 260 negative and more or less i'll definitely find my village or my base and also this grassland uh, this plains I removed most of the grass, if you can see. Um, it's I actually cut all the grass in this area. Reason being I wanted the wheat in order to make that huge, huge wheat farm. And it's going to, to help us a lot in the future. Look, a donkey. I think it's a donkey. Because you also get a... What's the other one? A, 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 in my language, it's called an ESL. I just forgot the correct term for it in English. But in Afrikaans, that thing, you'll call it the ESL, not a donkey. Donkey even remains the same name in Afrikaans. If you are Afrikaans or you like the language and want to learn, maybe you'll learn a few words from me here on my channel. Uh, but uh, some things remains the same. And I also found bees. Check this little guy. I think he has a brother inside the nest. There's he. There's the brother. And you know, you can multiply bees as well. And the way to go about doing this, you would pick up flowers and you feed it to both bees. You give this one a flower as well as that one and you'll end up having a baby bee. And then you can feed the baby bee until it grows up and feed him again and again and again. And you'll end up having a lot of bees and a big bee farm. And we'll also be doing that on this world. What I'm actually doing now is just to run around, see if we can't find uh, some cows. Find the cows, uh, yes, destroy them, uh, get leather from them, which we need for books. And I think you need one book or a few books to make a bookshelf. I haven't made bookshelves in a while on this game. Lucky for me, I still remember all the controls. I know exactly where to go to do what. 
yes, I'm, I'm pretty well, uh, well taught in Minecraft after my son had to show me most, if not all of the, of the items. He was the one that actually showed me what I need in order to start off. He talked to me about uh, skeletons. He's young. He's 10 years old. I think by the time I started playing Minecraft, he was uh, eight, eight or seven years old. That's when he actually started showing me how everything works. And I was actually astonished. Uh, I couldn't believe that such a young guy like him knows so much about a game. Uh, and he showed me how it works. And then today I ended up being like a... I believe myself to be a master in uh, in Minecraft. I know most of the tricks and hacks and tips and what have you throughout the years of playing, and and it's not difficult to get there. It's it's just playing and playing and playing on a daily basis, and that's what makes you stand out from the rest. It's either you're good and you still got a lot to learn, but in my eyes, being a gamer, you are never bad. I don't care what people say. Uh, it doesn't matter to me whether you win every single game, whether you are the best in every single game. There's no such thing as a bad gamer. If you are a gamer, it's a, it's a special community. I've been a gamer since a very, very young age. I can't even remember. Uh, in uh, I can tell you guys now, uh, I saw the very first PlayStation being released, the PS1. And you might think, oh, damn, this guy is very, very old. And no, I'm not that old at all. I'm a 91 baby. Uh, and I saw the first PS1 being released. We actually grew up playing on uh, on those TV games. The ones that you've got the cassettes. And you need to actually place them inside your, your machine. And then play stuff like Contra, Mario Bros and uh, Tetris and all those. So that's where my gaming adventure actually kicked off or my life as as a gamer and since then i played on all consoles i played pc and i've played basically every single game all to new i've played them all i even on my cell phone here uh, i've got a got a psp emulator that i'm actually using to play stuff like uh, god of war the older ones more classic versions of god of war i also finished uh, the newest one on ps4 and uh, yes, I'm a gamer. So yes, being a gamer and all, you are never bad. Sometimes you just make a lot of mistakes, but it's the mistakes that teaches us how to do things perfectly. Uh, I managed to stumble across a lot of YouTube uh, channels in my life. And on every single one of them, most of them, like the fake versions, the ones where people seem to be perfect at everything believe me guys it's not true it's not true at all you are not born and you pick up a game and you are perfect you you get to a certain point of being comfortable with a game and that all comes down to the amount of time you played the game and uh, what you actually learned inside while playing the game and that's what makes you good at a game or not but yes, there are some games that you do need like a talent for, like a lot of shooting games, especially uh, uh, Apex Legends. Uh, there's some good guys. I think you get better in time, but I do think there are some people that just got that edge. They've just got something else that even myself, I don't have it. And I even till this day get on YouTube and I watch them play because it's something to see. Having a specific talent to be that good at a game, it, it's nice. That's, it's part of being a gamer. You learn and you continue to learn. Anyway, I'm struggling to find a lot of cows. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to get cows in this world. I don't know where they've all gone to. Maybe there's like a collection, cow collection center or something. Or like a, a cow mall where all of them gather around and talk and have fun. While I'm running around here in the field, struggling to get hold of them. I don't know, we'll have to go out and... Oh, there is one. Two of them, in fact. I think you are lost, buddy. All your friends are somewhere else. Let's kill them. 
This is how you take take out the cow. And I don't know if you've noticed on bedrock when you jump and eat, you see those little stars that it did. Uh, check if I'm just going to eat. There's no stars. Let's get another mop so I can show you quickly. It's it's a tip. It's a tip because I I know a lot of you have watched uh, Java Edition Minecraft. All of us basically uh, ended up watching a few Java Edition gameplays and stuff. And you would see that the players or the YouTubers would tend to jump and hit. And the same thing is true for Bedrock. If you haven't known this, uh, you do now. So you jump and you hit uh, coming down. Let me show you. You see those stars? Don't hit while you are in the air. You need to hit while coming down. Let me show you again. So you jump coming down uh, like this. Like this. You hit. You find those small stars. It means if you do get the stars... It's an immediate kill. Let me show you with this thing. Immediate kill. One shot kill. But if you do not jump, I think it takes like two two shots with a, three shots using your stone sword. More than three if you use like the wooden sword. But I think with this one I'm having the steel sword. It's, it's a two shot kill. But if you jump, you save a lot on the life of your, your equipment. So just jump while coming down from the jump. In the air jump, when you come down, you hit. Down, you hit. Then you'll get an instant kill. Anyway, let's go back. I managed to get two more leathers. I know this episode is already long and we haven't done much. Uh, please do excuse that. But essentially, I think I might up, may end up maybe forwarding a few useless parts. With me talking a lot, I'll just have to see, but personally I like to upload raw video footage. I'll give it to you as it happens, as it is. I don't like, like to go around editing everything to get it as perfect as possible, because nobody's perfect. Uh, people might think they are perfect, but they are not. So yes, you'll get it, you'll get the raw footage from me. Uh, it, it is what it is, if anything happens around me as I'm sitting here now making this video i think you'll also hear what's happening and what's going on anyway let me quickly head outside i want to see uh, it's still going to take a lot a long time for this thing to fill up uh yeah but basically this is what i wanted to do in this episode i know it's not much but i'm not rushed i'm not rushed at all remember it's a it's a minecraft let's play series and uh, if you are out there, you also make uh, YouTube videos with Minecraft. Uh, you want people to see the journey. And when you go back, I know many people would say, yeah, but your videos are too long. People don't tend to watch such long videos. Yes, it might be true. But still, one day you might just end up coming back to your videos, like the older versions, just to see what you, what you did and how you did it. And maybe you, you are trying to build like your XP farm and then it's a good thing to come back, watch the video and then you, you are, you've got like a refresher course for your, own, for your own gameplay. So I don't care how long it is, uh, if you guys don't want to watch the whole thing, I mean it's up to you, but if you do watch the whole thing, I'm also so thankful for that and all the support you guys have shown, especially the few uh, YouTubers that commented on some of my videos. Uh, I would like to thank you guys uh, for your support and uh, I'll give you guys support as well because I mean that's what we are here for. Uh, you support me, I support you all the way and uh, so long as we can play a bit of Minecraft and uh, I'm able to show you guys how to play, how to do certain things, it's a win-win, it's a win situation for everybody. Anyway, as you can see in my world, it takes a long time for the for the sugar canes to grow. We've got some more uh, cows to, to slaughter over here. And we managed to get three more leathers. So this is what I'm going to be doing. Be in between every single episode with me talking a lot and uh, so on, uh, I'll be killing mobs. Uh, destroying them, getting leather because it's going to help us. I don't want to go around and take the easy way by uh, looking for your for the for the end for the end portal 
and then using those books and stuff i want to show you guys how to do it from the start doing it yourself so this gameplay is basically do it yourself with vinon play games now let's kill this one as well uh, we need meat so whether we kill them and they don't give us leather or not it's meat and meat can always be used especially for food when going to the to the nether and i'm still i'm still very scared i know a lot of you out there are also scared to go to the nether especially me i'm i'm scared i don't like the nether we have already seen where the portal leads us to uh, and and it, uh, i'm not happy at all with the spawn location but on that one i'll also show you how to get out of the danger zone very easily and quickly and all we're going to need on that one is just a few blocks and some ladders we're going to move the portal into the ceiling uh, that's the safest place to be inside the nether you can go down below ground but remember below going down you'll end up eating a lot of lava lakes and we don't want that going into the ceiling your chances of getting lava lakes uh, is decreased dramatically so uh, you know what this episode has been quite quite long uh, so what i'm going to do now is i'm quickly going to see how much uh, cooking we still have left to do let me just place all the wool inside the wool chest and i want to show you quickly the wood i managed to gather so in the last episode we we did not place this one the birch i don't think we placed it in the item frame but anyway i got a few stacks of the of the oak as well as a two stacks plus one birch so yes that's what i what i did in in between uh, last episode and this episode because I did not want to make another episode where I just run around uh, punching trees, getting the stupid things. Okay, let's quickly sleep. Maybe I'll do a quick fast forward of the smelting process. Let's just get outside quickly and see how much is left. Because in this episode, I really want to show you guys how to use the XP farm. It's going to help you so, so much. It's even going to help me. Because having it in my world is, oh, we've, we don't have much left to go. We are already at three, almost four stacks. Then we only need one more stack. And uh, I can show you guys actually how to use this thing. But because the, the, the episode is getting way, way longer than I expected. I don't know. I don't know whether, what do you guys think? Uh, I can't ask you that. You'll only be seeing this video after I posted it. Let's just kill this horse. I know it looks looks bad, but I wonder if it's got leather. Doesn't have. There's the, the father on top. Let's get rid of him. He's also going down. I want to get leather from him. Okay, doesn't have. Sorry, baby. Now you're alone. You must be strong and survive. Just the way I shoot. Uh, yes, anyway, let's quickly run around, see if we can't hit a few mobs, uh, get some more cattle while we wait for the final stack to uh, smelt. Uh, I just decided that I'm not going to be forwarding anything. I mean, we are almost there already. Uh, we, I sh already showed you how to build uh, the XP farm. So while watching this video, you can maybe use my video as a guideline uh, to build your own. Uh, but I would suggest uh, rather wait a bit so that we can see uh, if it still works. I hope it works. If it doesn't, it means I'll also have to go out on YouTube, maybe find a few other ones and then do it myself again. I mean, this is Minecraft. Minecraft has a very, very big community and we learn from one another. So, yes, I don't feel bad at all to, to tell you guys that. A lot of the builds that I know today is because of seeing other YouTubers do it. Sometimes that's the only way. Or you see your friends or somebody else do it. And that's how you learn. Oh, three more the leather. It's good. It's good. We are getting there. We are getting there. Slowly but surely. Uh, three more. A lot of meat. I think by this time we've got enough meat to, to cook a whole stack of steak. And uh, we won't be, it won't be necessary for us to run around uh, with bread anymore. But I think a starter food in Minecraft, eating bread, is one of the best starter foods. Other guys will tell you if you do spawn in a, in a, 
in a spruce forest, uh, which I actually have, uh, while running around in this area over here in the open plains, I saw there, there's a, a it's a, what do they call this, a tiger? Yes, it's a tiger. I almost, almost fell inside this ravine. Uh, the ravines I talked about is this one. This is one of them. One ravine here. And then it, it crosses the river over on this side. And it goes into another one. And then if you guys can remember inside my mind. We also have another one. So I'm not. I think this might even be the same. It doesn't look like it. But there's a lot of ravines in my world. There are really a lot of ravines surrounding me. Anyway let me quickly show you. So what I was saying is in that forest over there, it's spruce wood. I'm in love with spruce wood and dark oak wood. It's one of the best wood types to build with. And I'm definitely going to be using uh, spruce and dark oak. If we manage to find some dark oak for our official home. So what guys will do if they do spawn in a tiger like that. I think it's a tiger. Uh, it's been a while. Anyway, uh, if you do spawn in that location, you'll manage to find berries. Those are red uh, berry bushes that you can easily, easily mine with your bare hands. You can just take it out. Don't walk through them because uh, eventually they, they'll end up killing you, taking your hearts. And uh, you can end up dying by berry bushes. And it might even be true in the real world because berry bushes tend to have a lot of thorns on them. Not all of them. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Some berry bushes don't even have a single thorn. But many of them do have thorns. So I think that's where Minecraft got the idea. So people will say the berries are one of the best starter foods. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't believe it. Uh, if you've got nothing else, I would say yes. Go for it. Take it. Eat it. Because you might die. But if you've got options, which you always do have in Minecraft, I mean from spawn, you can just kill a few cows, uh, create your first furnace, which is easy because remember you need to make your first pickaxe, uh, a wood pickaxe, get some cobblestone, make the furnace, you can even use wood inside your first furnace, which means you don't need to worry, be worried about coal from the get-go, you can just get enough wood and uh, kill some cows, there you go you've got a good source of food already and uh, mobs continuously spawn so you'll never run out of them let me just open for the kitten or the cat to get out uh, you'll never see me uh, kill cats or pets in the game like this or the dogs i don't like to hurt them uh, but chickens and the cows and stuff as cute as they might be yes we need them so i will be be slaughtering a lot of those in this let's play let's just quickly refill this guy i think we are almost done 21 we are almost halfway please guys if you've been watching this video till now <laughs> thanks for sticking with me uh, minecraft is a game that requires patience you can't just jump into minecraft and expect everything good to come to you uh, at once You'll have to give it enough patience. You'll have to take your time. Don't rush into situations. Especially in the nether. I know a lot of my friends. A lot of other YouTubers that I follow. Myself. Whenever I see them and I watch their videos. When they, when they rush into a cave. Or inside the nether. They end up dying as well. So uh, it's a bit of good advice. Especially in the nether. Even if you are, you are like a Minecraft YouTuber and you do upload videos. Sometimes it doesn't matter how long your video is. What matters is what you do in the time that you're on screen. I don't think I've done a lot today. Uh, it might seem boring and what what. But yes, uh, that's why I'm saying I might end up cutting some of the, the content in this video out. I'll just have to decide on that later. I'd, I also want to keep my videos as small or as short as possible. I don't want to keep you guys with nonsense. But you must also also uh, look into the fact that if you do make a video and it covers something cool or awesome, the shorter your video is, the more your, your viewers would end up saying, but you haven't finished. 
and you never finish anything you don't finish your builds almost like what i did with the storage room that i think personally is another story it took more time uh, more effort i actually just recently opened this world so yes i think it's a bit understandable having two episodes for one build and the bigger your builds the more episodes on your builds anyway let's quickly have a look at this again we are on the final box and 31 baked potatoes almost full we are almost there ladies and gentlemen uh, boys and girls anybody watching almost almost there uh, while I've been waiting, uh, if you are new, you maybe decided to watch this video, but only the end portion, which will be a bit strange, but anyway, you never know, you do get, oh my soul, I think I might end up dying, uh, almost, almost, you see, that's why, why I want the raw footage to be uploaded, because uh, this guy over here almost ended up killing me, and do you see what he's holding in his hand? Oh, wow, you came to me. I didn't even have to go out looking for you. Let's kill him. I want to show you what he's got. Did I get it? And quickly check my inventory. Uh, no. No, I almost thought he had that. Uh, it's like a scase kind of a shell that the drowned uh, zombies keep with them. And if you manage to collect a few, you are able to create your, your conduit for underwater breathing, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, underwater mining and stuff like that. No, underwater breathing you do with a potion. So I think the conduit is more for the, for the mining part, in order for you to mine underwater faster. Look at this guy. Hey, what's up, man? Good in you. Good in you. Ah, good and you, good and you. Yes, it's Vainant here. You're still looking at me. Let, let me show you. Check, check the heads. I like, I really, really like the way Minecraft mobs behave when you approach them. Anyway, I think we might just be done very close. Now is, is that part. Okay, you know what? Let's quickly go in and sleep. You see why I placed uh, these two pressure plates? I did explain. Never mind. Let me quickly go and sleep. Uh, when we wake up and it's daytime, we'll quickly uh, continue. And then by that time, we the, the XP farm will be finished. And I can actually and finally show you how it works. Uh... Anyway, uh, let's go back. I just want to go up up the steps. Just want to be on the lookout for creepers. You know, uh, creepers are well known for hiding and you don't hear them. Check those two villagers are busy getting another small villager. And you know, I've only given them like 20 something carrots each. I did not even have a stack. And there we go. Welcome to the world, buddy boy welcome welcome you're looking at your master builder your master food provider in this village thank you very much goodbye anyway uh, let, let's quickly have a look at this 64 we are full i think we already cooked too many okay guys ladies and gentlemen the moment we've all been waiting for here's what's happening now that we've got this thing completely full with cobblestone and we've got this thing, the hopper, completely full with baked potatoes. Here's how you get your levels. If you look down below, just above my hotbar, you will see it says 31. So, my the way I use this farm is like this. Other YouTubers tend to tell you, let it cook 2 or 3 or even 10 or 20. And they would even go as far as to tell you, uh, cook up a whole stack and then remove it. Today, I'm here to tell you the opposite. Don't do it. When you throw your potatoes inside, leave the smoker, go back into the smoker and remove. Leave, go back in and uh, remove. Leave, go back in. Watch my levels. Just keep an eye on them. Remove. Go back in. Already 34 with one. There we go. Almost 35 with one. So I think it takes two to give you one level up there 35 
remember to go out don't stay inside because if you if you don't go out it doesn't count it doesn't give the smoker time to register the levels look 36 and we were on 31 when we started look at that 37 uh 38 it seems like we are getting a level per potato almost 39 and there we go 39 levels using basically let me have a look uh yes would it be safe to say it was less than 10 no could it have been maybe yeah maybe less than 10 i'll have to go back in the video and make sure how many we used but just look at that uh, and remember with levels uh, important thing to to remember with levels the higher up you go the more xp you need in order to level up so given the fact that we have already been on level 31 using those few potatoes we managed to gain almost 10 more levels with such little amount of potatoes and uh, the way i did it do it the same way do not stay inside while the potatoes are cooking don't stay inside uh, the the smokers menu leave the menu uh, every time when you when you took out one potato leave go quickly back inside take the potato leave go back take the potato that's the best most efficient way to to harvest your cooking your or your cooked uh, potatoes and uh, you're gonna thank me in the long term uh, when we do eventually end up using this 39 levels i'm gonna show you how with only one potato and i'm not joking a single potato you get eight levels especially being that low on levels when you've got let's say zero zero levels if you smelt one potato you'll have seven to eight if not more levels and uh, yes that's the perfect perfect uh, xp farm in minecraft it's basically free all you need is some uh, coal and you don't even need coal in this in this baby all you need you can even place wood as fuel so i think this is the simplest smallest most compact and cheapest xp farm in the whole of minecraft it it's the safest one to build as well you just need wood for the chest maybe some iron for the for this thing the hopper and a few other things you'll need one furnace and uh, some stone and some other things to build your smoker but i mean come on guys uh, how cheap could it be to get a small machine as effective as that and then one other thing is get yourself a massive a massive potato farm and look at us look how quickly these potatoes grew up i think with me standing around taking killing uh, things we spent so much time doing this the potatoes actually grew which means if i go and harvest them i'll be having thousands upon thousands of potatoes in order to get myself thousands of levels non-stop and uh, not only that let me show you another uh, positive thing about the the level farm or, or the xp farm let me just put all the wool away quickly i just want to place all the items that we managed to get now inside their respective uh, boxes because we don't want to walk around having so much of everything those we're not going to use it now remember i've got enough levels already i just want to place all the food items and then go back to the this one and uh, place and look at that we are already at 19 leathers oh it's good it's good i love minecraft so much anyway uh, so what i wanted to show you another a positive thing about this xp farm and not a mob xp farm uh, i'll do a quick comparison on a mob on the mob xp farm you will end up using a sword to kill the mobs so using your sword maybe you made your sword using iron uh, on this xp farm that i'm using uh, there's no such thing so you're not losing your tools uh, you don't need to run far to get to your stuff you just basically need to build this thing and harvest crops then you've got the perfect xp farm and it still works as you could have seen just now on the latest 17.4 
update Minecraft Pocket Edition and I think uh, Bedrock Edition as well. Another positive is this, baked potatoes. So, if you manage to get your XP farm soon in, the, in your new world, you will not only end up having a lot of uh, levels, you will also end up having a lot, a lot of food. This baked potatoes is also a very nutritional food in Minecraft. It, it restores a lot of your food bars uh, at the top level. I think two, almost the same as bread. So yes, it's a bonus bonus, win-win. You do get a lot of baked potatoes eventually and we'll end up burning some of them off in, in maybe like a, a lava dustbin that we're still going to create. Uh, but we'll get to that. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, if you watched this video all the way to the end, uh, thank you for doing so, uh, giving me the watch time and uh, supporting my channel. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was the whole episode basically covered this little thing here, but I think it deserves uh, more than we've actually given it. Uh, do subscribe if you want to be notified on the next episode that I'm definitely going to be posting uh, tomorrow. Uh, every day I post one, so tomorrow will be the next one. Uh, so that you can see what we come up next. Uh, I'll, I'll figure out the nice plan so that we can actually do something fun in the next episode. This was fun, but not that fun. And this was basically a must. Not even that much fun. I want to have some fun. Because we've been spending a lot of Minecraft days mining and building. And on the next one, we are just going to be having a bit of fun. Killing stuff, exploring the overworld maybe exploring the nether a little bit stuff like that thank you guys for watching my name was Vainant play games and still is Vainant play games uh, like i said if you want to subscribe it's all up to you i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you on the next one goodbye